Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. Let me see where you're calling from, not calling from, watching from, and joining us live today. This is the Michael Essick live stream, Thursday, the 21st of January. I had no idea what date it was because they're all blending into one these days. Ray is first up. Hello to you, Ray and Raymond. We got Ray, double Rays. Uh, Tomatori. Good evening to you, Grey Elephant Club from Cleveland, Ohio. Gary is here. Ron from Michigan is here. Angie is here too. And N Holloway, uh, happy post, po post US inauguration day. Lance from Tallahassee. Julian is here too. Eddie is here. Scott is here from Andalusia. Bo is here. Hello to you, Alison from Scotland. Dominic from Sydney. And Kathleen, howdy to you as well. Um, I'm assuming everything's good. Camera sound is all hunky dory. Um, it is just gone 3 p.m. here in the UK. Uh, snowed yesterday, floods, um, all kinds of fun and games going on around uh, around here. Although not me, we're we're okay. Uh, we're safe from the floods and stuff. Um, Sue says hi from Wisconsin. Mike says good morning from Texas. Amira. From a very calm USA, Arthur says hello, and Scott says all good. Nicholas says hola a todos. And uh, yeah, today we're doing live design idea fixing. So I sent out an email yesterday. A bunch of you have replied. We've got, I don't know, something about 15 maybe designs to look at. Not too many. So quite a manageable amount today, which is good. Um, I'm going to dive into those shortly. But if you're joining us for the first time, it's great to have you. And you can do the old thumbs up thing on the video, wherever you're watching from, that would be great. And subscribe if you haven't already. Today's plan, as I mentioned, is fixing some design. So I'm particularly looking at the ideas. We're trying to think about improving our design ideas, not just the design side, although we will cover that as well, but also how do we get better design ideas? How do we come up with ideas that are catchy, funny, unique, original? How do we inject a bit of our own personality into designs so we can come up with something that's really valuable long term and not just a short term you know quick funny text design but something that's actually going to stand the test of time as well as usual you can ask your questions anything you want to ask me about i'm here for about an hour um, you can ask me about the designs we're looking at you can ask me about print on demand you can ask me about art licensing i'll do my best to answer your questions. And if you do want ideas help, I'll talk about this a little bit more at the end, but um, I'm doing a live training next Tuesday. This is a free live training, but it won't be on YouTube. It will only be via a private kind of live stream group. So if you're interested in that, if you want to join the live training next week, it will be a training where I'm going to share some idea methods, some new idea methods, and show you some updates to the ideas workshop. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up at michaelessick.com forward slash ideas live. And um, yeah, you'll be able to join me live next Tuesday. Okay, um, let's see what else we got. Teddy's here, Scott's here, Maria's here. Nuno from Portugal is here too. Great to have you. Um, just as a kind of primer again, if you're maybe joining us for the first time or you're just watching this video, um, maybe you're an artist or a designer, illustrator, prints on demand seller. The key thing here is, uh, and who these sessions are really for, is for people who want to create designs that are going to be printed on products or are somehow commercial. So there's going to be commercial art, whether that's to be printed on T-shirts or to be printed on posters, or maybe you're selling your own merch or something like that, or you're an artist and you want to sell products with your designs on them to your fans or to people who like your work. It's that kind of thing. That's who we're talking about, and those are the kind of designs that I'm uh, best at improving and, and have the most uh, to talk about. So if you're a fine artist or a painter or a photographer, I'm not really going to be able to offer you that much help. But if you're a designer, doodler, illustrator, and you can create or you want to create kind of funny designs or not even necessarily funny designs, but, you know, succinct little uh, creations and artworks that can be printed on things and sold and licensed, then that's what these sessions are for. Okay, today we're going to review and improve some of these designs with a focus on ideas, as mentioned, and concepts. And uh, before we do, just a few big questions to bear in mind before I dive into these designs here. These are the three big questions that I recommend you ask about every idea, and you can kind of qualify things and filter things using this framework. 
the three big questions are who is going to wear it? Why would they want to wear it? And also, how are they going to find it? So who, why, and how, if you can answer those questions, and the better your answers are for each of those questions, the greater the chances are that you have a design that you can actually sell and make some money from and, and really have something of value. And I also wanted to add, even though we have those three questions there, and that's a really good framework to follow, it's still the case that not every idea is a winner. If you're going to do this um, you know, professionally or full-time, or you'd like to get there, then you have to produce a lot of designs and a lot of work. And obviously that's really good. That's how you're gonna improve your skills and improve your abilities and improve your ideas. But it also means that you know, you're know you gonna produce a lot of stuff that actually is not probably gonna sell or is not gonna sell very well. And that's fine, not every idea is a winner. And it's okay to have ideas, to have a go at them, to try and turn them into designs, and then to decide, you know what? I thought that was a good idea, but it isn't, I'm gonna, you know, push it to the side, forget about it and try something else and move on to the next idea because there's always new ideas and new approaches to take to stuff. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in today's session as we review some of these designs. So I feel like I did a lot of talking there very fast. And um, before we get into it, I'll have a little breather and a little drink. Tomatori says he's registered for the live. A Zippo is here. Don Kane from Maybury, North Carolina, I believe that is. Nuno says it's okay to design political design like Biden Harris for merch. Um, I don't know if it is. I think um, there's a few things there that come to mind. Number one is I, I'm, I'm sure there were some issues around Biden Harris and the uh, trademark and stuff. Like they were actually shutting people down. They didn't want people selling unofficial Biden Harris merch. Someone in the comments will know better than me um, if that's the case, because I haven't done any Biden Harris related stuff or anything like that. Um, generally and historically, it has been fine to do designs based around politicians and political things like that. However, um, it's still a pretty gray area in many ways. And it's also a very competitive area, of course. Um, so, yeah. And the other thing that comes to my mind is I don't know how popular those kind of designs that approach is necessarily going to be now you know we're just off off the tail end of a campaign um you know inauguration day was yesterday is there going to be much appetite for political designs um probably not in the immediate short term you know these things ramp up towards an election and that's when people are campaigning don't get me wrong there'll be a lot of people buying Biden Harris and Trump merch for years to come um but i'm not sure it's like you know necessarily something you'd want to jump into now of all times uh swear works from arizona is here angie says the quality the quantity thing is my issue i'm too precious yeah um that's a really good point angie and i was i was very uh similar uh early on i, I would spend days and in, in some cases weeks working on designs and um, I think that really holds us back and it really held me back. And it was only when I started being a little bit less picky, less perfectionist and started ha having the attitude of churning out designs. Um, not that, you know, because obviously there's two extremes. There's quantity over quality and quality over quantity. And you want to find that balance somewhere between the two. But especially in the early days of any business, you are grinding the wheels to get the vehicle moving and you have to really push through. And that usually means doing a lot of, a lot of designs in the first place. And that means you should probably err on the side of less, less be less worried about the quality, just work on getting more and more stuff out. Um, so yeah, um, it's definitely a problem for, for artists and designers. We, we tend to be uh, people who want to get everything perfect. The good thing about, especially like, designs, whether that's for t-shirts or whatever kind of product, you can always go back and do them again. You can always improve them. And the, the kind of bandwidth you have to use to create a design shouldn't be that huge. You know, you think about, um, I was thinking about like YouTubers making videos or a couple of videos every week or a video every day in some cases, uh, even like musicians who record songs that takes quite a lot of effort designs and certainly t-shirt designs really don't need to like with a video if you're if you're a youtuber you have to record yourself you have to edit video you have to get all these things right and that's a lot of 
bits and pieces to get together. It's a lot less with designs. So I feel like we should probably get to a point or we should start thinking in terms of this is not a, that big a deal. I can churn out designs. It doesn't have to take me days to create a design and it doesn't have to be this amazing piece of art. It can be, you know, simplified version of a, of an idea. Okay. Uh, Teddy, I was considering a couple of my ideas to send in for review, but I already knew what you would say about them. What's breakthrough your teaching is finally getting through, through my thick skull. Uh, good. Thank you, Teddy. Ron, Nuno, if you avoid trademarks and can wait for the long manual review times. Uh, so I guess that's about uh, Biden. Maria, I just had a Kamala shirt accepted yesterday, which already sold. So there you go. She's proving me wrong on both points. Um, Alison, I think they're okay with Biden, but anything Trump is a no-no. Okay, there you go. Heather says, hi from Leeds. Multitasking with my day job, so lying low. Okay, cool, Heather, no problem. Um, yeah, Rob. Ahoy, fellow creators and sellers, wishing you calm waters and lashings of cash. Sounds good to me. Scott says, that's me too. Bo says, same here. Uh, Don says, political niche is very oversaturated. Taryn says, hello from Mumbai. Anna, 002, for MBA, lower tiers, what is the best approach? Follow trends, where to find good trends or evergreen ideas? Um, I think the answer is yes. The answer is yes, everything. Um, you know, if, if your objective in the lower tiers in Merch by Amazon is simply to get to the higher tiers, then it's it's a hard question to answer because you know, if you're good at trends, if you're able to identify trends before they come online or before they really break and you're able to get some sales that way, that's great. Um, but equally, I feel like there's lots of evergreen opportunities, which if you dive into them, not that you're, the sales will come thick and fast, but that you're, you know, the, the big problem with Amazon is finding opportunities that other people haven't found yet or, you know, capitalizing on little corners that other people are not you know, uh, going hell for leather on. So, so it's both and it's whatever really is best, um, or best lends itself to, to you and your, your approach and your style. Swearworks, any input on using Printify connected to WooCommerce sites instead of Shopify? Um, no, I have not uh, used Printify with WooCommerce. So can't really comment on that. Hello from Montana says hideouts adventures, little bad rant says, thank you for inspiring us to keep creating and not get hung up on perfection. You're welcome. Lance, question on idea sorter. You had five star columns, da, 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 da. How do you actually personally prioritize this star system? I'm going to hang, I'm going to hang that one on the neck some other time, Lance, because um, I will be covering that in the ideas workshop, which I know you are a part of. So uh, don't let's, uh, let's park that one for now. Kathleen, original Trump stuff has sold very well for me, but that's pretty much done now. Yeah, I would expect so. Until four years from now, of course. Uh, Pat C, hi from Georgia. And hideouts, I want to hire an artist. I've got ideas. I'd like to work faster and have some designs done for me. Where can I hire? I am thinking about using the logo design contest companies to do this. Um, yeah, I. Uh, in terms of hiring designers, I, I have found people through sites like Behance and Dribble and even sites like 99design. So... 99designs is one of those sites where you can go and post um, briefs and people will compete to, you know, they'll create a load of ideas and then you can pick which one you want to work with. I actually find it's quite a great place just to scour and kind of spy on to find find good designers because uh, there's certain campaigns which are public so you can view all people's submissions and then if you find a designer you like the look of, you can try and reach out to them. So that that's an approach I would, um, you might want to go down. Okay. Um, Drew says logo design contests are from the devil. Yes, they they are, and I would not recommend uh, working on de logo design contest sites. But if you're looking to find designers, they can be uh, a relatively decent way of doing so. Scott, um, it wouldn't be over if this was Clown World Trump merch. Okay, cool. Um, someone saying higher through Fiverr also. Okay, I think we're going to park that one there. And oh, one last question. Do you think it's possible to create quality scaled designs as opposed to a one-off approach? I'm in the 20K tier on MBA and finding it difficult to fill slots. I think it's it's difficult to do quality scaled. Um, it's possible to do scaled designs that, that sell. It's harder to create like big batches of designs in a kind of automated way or even slightly automated and have them be good designs at the same time, I think that's pretty difficult. You know, most of us are probably familiar with things like um, 
I'm the birthday boy with a number nine. I'm the birthday boy with a number 10. I'm the birthday boy with a number 11. Those kind of scaled approaches are um, easy to automate. But if you want to do something that's kind of quality, then it, it's it's much more difficult. So I think there are ways. I think it comes down to less about automation of text. And if you can kind of improve and aut not automate, but find ways of speeding up the creation of artwork, and there's ways of doing that, um, that's something I would I would maybe think about. Um, Okay, Tomatori says he worked some time on 99 designs, but now we have no time for it. Sounds good to me. Salam, Michael. Salam to you, F educators. Okay, we've done the three big questions. Let's look at some designs. I want to make sure we get through these because people have been kind enough to send them in. I want to give you my thoughts and just kind of offer some improvements and stuff. So these two, uh, not a lot we can say. These are designs which are, have no text and have no meaning. Um, in the broadest, you know, broadest sense of the word, uh, we've got an octopus with a, I think that's a Les Paul, um, Gibson Les Paul. And I, yeah, there's not a lot, obviously, I can say about this one. Um, it, it's not a t-shirt design, certainly. It's not a, a design that looks like it's made for any kind of product, really. Um, it certainly doesn't, you know, by looking at it, we can't say, oh, this is a design for a t-shirt or this is a design for a poster. It's just a looks like a fairly fairly amateurish um, you know attempt at putting some elements together which is fine of course we all start somewhere and, and I don't mean to criticize in that sense but what I mean is there's not a design core here there's no concept there's no idea that's really clear however um, just as an example of how you could take something like this um, you know you got an octopus with a guitar, the, you know, if we could try and like circle around a concept for something like this, um, octopus is a is a is an is an interesting animal to do designs around. Like, there's lots of options with octopuses or octopi. Um, they have eight arms, so you've got a, a a guitar in one arm. You could have his other arm could a couple of arms could be doing a drum kit, and then another arm could be doing the bass, and you could have a little octopus that's playing lots of instruments. That could be a kind of visual design. Um, obviously, it would need to be rendered in a in an attractive style and stuff. But that's the kind of design that um, you know would probably sell on something like Threadless. Like it doesn't need text, it doesn't need a, a joke. But if you did an octopus with, let me sketch out what I'm talking about, um, just to make it clear, kind of how I would approach something like this. So uh, let me share my iPad screen here. So this, just your, whoever sent that one in got me thinking. So, you know, you got an octopus and he could have, you know, let's say he's got a guitar here and then he's got, I don't know, a little drum kit over here, a couple of cymbals and his drumsticks. something like this. And then he's got, I don't know, like a bass over here, pointing the other way. Maybe he's got a microphone as well. Um, and he's just, you know, singing away or whatever. I don't know, something like this, I think, um, you know, rendered properly with some nice, um, you know, in the right style or something, little fish on the drum kit. Um, that's the kind of idea, you know, it's just a visual based idea. It's not a joke as such, well, it kind of is a joke, but it's, you know, like a nice little illustration that makes a play on the fact that an octopus has eight legs so he can do things like that. So, you know, little little ideas like that is kind of what we're uh, what we're all about here. And that kind of design could, could do very well on a, a site like Threadless or something like that. It could be a funny, cute idea. Um, this one here, the um, rabbit. Um, again, you know, it, it looks nice enough. It's, um, you know, it looks fairly professional and, and decent. But again, there's no concept here. There's nothing to get our teeth into. We need to hash, you know, we need to do more than just nice illustrations. Now, of course, there are ways of selling simple illustrations on on designs and t-shirts and products and merch. Um, they do not sell organically. You have to 
you know, th those kind of things that sell will be attached because they're attached to a brand or an individual, someone with a large following or something like that. If that's you and this is your design, then then fine. You know, if you've got 10,000 Twitter followers or whatever, then you can launch merch and say, hey, I created this funny bunny merch or whatever and give it a name and whack it out. It, it happens. Absolutely. If that's not you, if you don't have 10,000 Twitter followers or whatever, then um you're you're really going to be starting usually from organic traffic which means you need to design things that people are looking for and with this design it's going to be very hard for us to figure out what are we talking about what are they going to be looking for are many people looking for scruffy bunny rabbit or bunny rabbit with earring design probably not so that's why um that's why I'd struggle with those ones. Let me uh, go back a second and a couple of comments, questions. Richie is here from Long Island, New York. Hello to you. Leslie, could you address the possible ideas with only text design with elements from Canva? Um, not really, Leslie. I'm not a, a Canva user myself. And Holloway says, Rocktopus. Very nice. Very good. Um, CM Elizabeth says, I'm with the band. So yeah, we got a couple of, like I said, it's, it doesn't require text. Um, but uh, people are already um, dropping some ideas for text that could accompany this uh, this octopus design. So that's cool. Animatra says, looks like a mouse, or we can call it a rat bit. Yeah, I thought it was a rabbit because of the, the ears, but, um, but yeah, I could be wrong. Okay, a couple of other ones here. Golf Cart Mafia. Um, again, like this design is obviously targeting... Um, uh, targeting golfers, I imagine, unless I'm missing something and there's some inside joke or whatever, but I guess that's that's what it is. It's people who like to golf and then it's a golf cart mafia. Um, I, I guess what, what you've tried to do is maybe make it look a bit like a gangstery type vibe or something or like a hip hoppy vibe, um, but that doesn't come through especially clearly. And I wonder whether there's you know more on the design side that you could do to push it. Um, certainly I think it, it could work as is, but I would, I would, you know, with an idea like that, I'd want to really push it and make it super obvious what your, what your idea and what your goal is. And I think there is room there for that conflict between golf players and hip hop and trying to put those two together or something or gangster rap and, and someone who likes to golf. They're not typically, you know, the, the same kind of people. So put them together and create a design that makes fun of that. Uh, that could work. So what would that look like? I would say more colors, um, more just more going on. You know, to me, it looks a little bit flat and a bit dull. Um, but, you know, with a bit more life and energy and maybe uh, more of a detailed illustration with some characters. Again, we, we've not got any character in here. We've not got any eyeballs. We've not got any faces. We've not got anything we can we can hook emotion onto. And if you can do that, that really usually helps. Okay, out of play all day. I think we did have this one before and in a, in a different um, format. Um, I have to admit, I'm still kind of struggling with this uh, this concept. I, I think out of play is a technical term in hockey, but from all I can find out, it means like the, the puck is out of play, right? Is that what it means? Maybe someone who knows about hockey can help me out. Um, but I'm really struggling again. I don't know why we've got a... I think this is a sloth or is it an armadillo or something? Um, I'm just not sure what the joke is. <laughs> I know we've done this design before and um, yeah, it's just not, it's not connecting with me. I'm not getting it at all. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Okay, a couple more. We got this one, uh, obviously a kind of concept sketch, fluent in nurse code. So obviously this one is kind of making a play on more, uh, yeah, Morse code, right? Morse code versus nurse code, um, fluent in nurse code, and obviously for for nurses and and people who are nurses, I don't know what else you would say. People in the nursing profession, um, so fluent in nurse code. I think this is uh, this is fine, you know, for a little design. I think maybe where things get a bit complicated is, and you've kind of illustrated it here with, I guess, what are a couple of pills or you know. Um, medicines or that kind of thing to illustrate the point i'm not you know i think when you say code you immediately start people trying to think about breaking down the code or what the code is and i i wonder whether that could cause some confusion with this this illustration but i don't know how exactly you would render morse code as a illustration you know 
in another way. Maybe there is some other way. Maybe there's some some graphics around Morse code that would communicate that meaning more clearly. Um, but yeah, that, that's just a concern from my my side. Um, nurse code, Morse code, is it that clear? Is it is it a great pun? Um, I, I'm not really sure. And I, I think the only way, again, like going back to my previous point about not every idea is a winner. You know, sometimes you've just got to create something, put it out there and see what sticks. I'm, I'm not sure there's much more, you know, you can do. Obviously, you need to design it, make it look nice and, and nursey. Um, but I think, uh, you know, apart from that, it's uh, it's, a, it's a decent, it, it has the seed of a decent idea. And obviously, it's based on a, a kind of pun. So put it out there and see if it, see if it sticks, really. Um, Lan says, nurse code, that's mine, was looking for medical items that are in the same of the dots and lines with Morse code. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely get what you've gone for, Lance. I think it's just that issue of, um, like, I look at it and wonder, is is that supposed to be the code? Like, you know, what does tablet, tablet, big tablet, big tablet, little tablet mean? And I don't know, it just like adds another complication to the to the idea, if that makes sense. It's like another layer, which is complicating matters. Uh, F educators, do we need to design an illustrator or is there another way? Um, no, you don't need to design an illustrator. Uh, my recommendation if you're if you're looking for design software would be um, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. Those are products which are equivalent to Photoshop and Illustrator, but they are um, like peanuts in comparison. I think right now actually that you can get them for you can get a 90 day trial on both of them and you can get them for 50% off and they were already like $50 or $40 or something. Um, so Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo are, um, Affinity Photo is like the Photoshop equivalent, Affinity Designer is like the Illustrator equivalent, and they are very good, uh, very well-priced and pretty comprehensive um, software choices. And N Holloway says, um, Autodesk Sketchbook is also great and free. So there you go. Scott says, maybe just nurse code, no fluent in. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it could do. I mean, you still got the problem of how to kind of get that across with um, with graphics without confusing people. But yeah, that's an option as well. And Scott says, Inkscape, Krita, and Gimp are other softwares. Absolutely, they are. I'm still wedded to Photoshop. I have weaned myself off Illustrator, but yeah. Um, Okay, this one, Grumpy Trumpy sat on the wall. Grumpy Trumpy made a bad fall. I, I think, again, there's a couple of issues with this. One of them being, I don't know how strong the appetite will be from now on um, with anti-Trump stuff. Uh, I just think the moment may have passed, for, at least for a season, until he comes back on the scene, perhaps, later. Um, so, yeah, that's one thing. Um so obviously this approach is for people who are anti-Trump and want to express that in some way. Um, I think it's 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 kind of a complicated way of expressing dislike for Trump. You know, you've got a couple of, you got a pretty long phrase. You've got quite a lot of text on this design. And also uh, it, it's not making uh, a, that much sense to me. Um, or... Like, I get Grumpy Trumpy sat on the wall. That kind of works. Grumpy Trumpy made a bad fall, like he fell in the trash. I don't know what that means. Um, so maybe maybe rework the end the ending of your phrase. Maybe that might be uh, a little bit better. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I don't... I mean, design-wise, it's hard when you've got so much text to really get it on a design and get it looking nice, but... Um, I suppose you have to with this with a with a phrase like that, which is two, you know, two sections. Um, but yeah, for me, it's a bit too busy. There's a bit too much going on. I think it could be it could be really simplified, and um, uh, or, or certainly there's much easier ways of of doing anti-Trump um, shirts. And believe me, um, <laughs> said in Trump voice, believe me. Um, I have sold a fair share of anti-Trump merchandise over the years, less so in recent years, but more uh, first time around. And uh, yeah, I think simple is always best with political stuff like that. You want to really get your point across, make it clear and bold and obvious. I'm not saying these kind of designs can't work because they do, but um, that would always be my, my preference for designs of that nature. Okay. 
Um, Tanya says, I moved from old Photoshop to Affinity a few weeks ago and never looked back. Awesome software, yeah. Um, uh, Scott says, anti-Trump will never die. Ron says, I wonder if I can ditch Photoshop and just use Affinity Photo. Yeah, probably you can do, but um, but yeah, you just have to play around. It's it, I'm just a bit too wedded to Photoshop to really give it up yet. Um, and you can get just Photoshop for like nine ninety nine a month or something. So it's a bit it's a bit more reasonable. Algorithm. Let's have a look at this one. Algorithm: the invisible force online entrepreneurs must befriend. So here we've got two designs which are quite similar. They've come from different people, but they're following that definition framework. You know, state the word, give its definition. And that, that is a, a well a well worn and well known kind of approach for for words and phrases and stuff. Um, so I mean, there's there's only so much we can we can say about these because that approach, you know, it's it's text only. It is, you know, it's not something you can really add illustrations to because once you do, you start taking away from the fact that you're trying to. Uh, you know, you're trying to look like the definition of a word. So once you start, if you start adding in illustrations, which is always my preference, like I would prefer graphics versus no graphics on any design, but you can't do that with these designs because then you start messing up the meaning of them. Um, so for example, this one with this illustration at the top, you know, it's, it's adding an extra complication to the idea of, you know, a typical definition style t-shirt. And this one does a good job of, of rendering the style. You know, we've got the word nice and clear. We've got the syllables. We've got the definition that it's a noun. And then we've got the, the definition below. So, um, so yeah, this is, uh, there's not, there's, I, I think there's not so much I can really say about them. There's not really much in terms of improvement I can offer on the ideas. All I could really say is, you know, whether your your definition of the word is is funny or not and i think you know this is something that um yeah if you're an entrepreneur if you're in that crowd maybe um it this this design might speak to you you might find it funny that definition of algorithm um i think you could take a step back about about that and and then look at the topic of algorithms in general and the the thing you've honed in on which is that algorithms are like this force that entrepreneurs have to kind of worship and give arms to in order to get things up the rankings or whatever it might be um you know think about that concept and then maybe you could do some something a bit more detailed maybe you can do a, a design where you've got you know the the mighty algorithm and people worshiping worshiping it like a you know graven statue or something like that or um you know all hail the algorithm i don't know there's other approaches from that same core joke and same concept that you could you could really push and i would prefer i mean Obviously, you put everything out there and you see what works. But I would always lean towards designs where you're, you know, you're you've got some more illustration elements in there. Um, namaste. This one, um, I think this is a little bit complicated as well. There's there's way too much going on, um, and I guess if I'm supposed to, if I'm if I'm reading it rightly, then the joke is really the joke. Joke is here. No man, stay away. So we kind of got a play on words. Um, a kind of pun, but it's it's delivered as the last line of this design, which takes you a while to get to, and it's you know it's not immediately obvious. And you know, no man stay away. Is that a funny joke? I would be tempted to go more something like. Um, uh, let me open up my iPad. Something like. Um, so the joke is really like Nama stay away, like or Naman stay away. So I would be tempted to go more for like a I mean, let's say you got a little yoga dude here. How do you do yoga poses? Whatever. Something like that. Um with Nama stay away. I think that's a clearer um, honing in on the, you know, the the joke, um, the the pun, the play on words that you've got. Um, something like that is a, is a a clearer rendering of it than the the than the route you've gone down with your design. So something like that. This could obviously be a cute character or something like that rendered in your style. But um, yeah, something like that with a bit more, with a core illustration that you can really build on. 
and obviously you would make it look like a a kind of yogury design with florals and whatever kind of background elements whatever those would be um but yeah that kind of approach i would i would recommend instead of uh what we've got here um Okay, Ron Dingen said, too bad Al Gore is not present. Yeah, because you could do algorithm, which is Al Gore dancing or something like that. Um, absolutely. Okay, uh, these ones here, how many, what are we doing? 35 minutes. Okay, we're doing okay. Um, I climbed Mount Druitt, Sydney, Australia. So this one needs a little bit of background um, and a little bit of context. And I'm, I'm pleased that the, uh, the individual who sent this one in um, did provide that. So Mount Druitt is the joke is Mount Druitt is not a is not a mountain. It is a just an area. It's just like a a district in Sydney. Um, there's another level to it. Mount Druitt is apparently quite a crime hotspot. It's quite a, a rough area. So so that's the other angle. So um, so yeah, there's a couple of things with this this approach um, and this design. I think it. Obviously, the, the joke being, um, I climbed a Mount Druitt. Well, no, you didn't. There's no there's no Mount Druitt to climb, or even I survived Mount Druitt, or that kind of approach. That's good. Um, there's, I mean, this is what's the best way of approaching it? You know, a design like this or an idea like this. Again, we're kind of you want to take a little step back and look at what's the joke and what's the core, you know, the core conflict and the core funny. And there's a few approaches here because you've got, um, like we said, Mount Druitt is not a mountainous region. So it can be funny to render it as though it is a mountainous region and that kind of thing. So, for example, one approach you could do similar to this, but slightly different, is um, is like greetings from Mount Druitt. And it could be like a mountain and it could look like, I don't know, like a Swiss Switzerland travel poster or something like that, that kind of approach. Um that could that could work, you know, something like that. And again, like I climb Mount Drew, I think it's it's okay. I think if it was my design, I'd probably want to push it one way or the other. Like you can, the illustration could be. I don't know if there's any kind of um, landmarks around Mount Drew. It um, not knowing the area at all, um, but maybe there's a, a landmark, and you could use that instead of a picture of a mountain. Or if you're going to go the mountain route, then um, then go go all in, you know. Let's do some some detailed illustrations of mountains. Let's do um, you know. Let's make let's do some colors. Let's make it look like a mountaineer type, you know, travel design or something like that, and push it more in that direction. Um, and as you mentioned in your email, I think you could push as well the kind of I survived Mount Druitt kind of line or angle. Um, I climbed Mount Druitt and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. Or with Mount Druitt being a rough area. I climbed Mount Druitt or I visited Mount Druitt and um, all I got was my wallet stolen or something like that. Um, you could even do like some blood splatter on the shirt. I don't know. I'm, you know, spitballing, but hopefully you get the uh, the idea there. You can just kind of push it. I think one final thing to say about a design like this, obviously it's very, very niche. It's hyper niche. It's hyper local. And um that's fine. Like those, you can sell those thanks to the magic of the internet. Um, I think you want to make sure though, that you're not, you know, you're not spending too much time on a design like this because it's, it's only ever going to sell in very kind of small quantities, unless you have a Mount Druitt Facebook page or something where you can, you know, sell them. But organically, I think it's, it's, I mean, I've got designs very similar to this for specific locations. Um, but I have thousands of them covering thousands of different locations. So they do sell, but they all sell in very small quantities. And if I didn't create lots of them, then I wouldn't be making, you know, decent income from them. So that's just another kind of point when you're doing designs like this. Don't expect something like that to really make um, make that much income. And also just be aware that it's it's not that evergreen. Like it's, it's only a design that can ever really sell around Mount Druitt to people who are from Mount Druitt. And people who are familiar with Mount Druitt, it's not a design that you can take and license to Target or to Spencer's or Hot Topic or something like that. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, Hideout says, get rid of the mountain picture and put a flag. F Educator says, there's a lot of difficulty in the success of new designers due to high competition. Um, yeah, but, you know, 
good designers and good ideas always win out um, in the long run. So I, I, I don't think there's ever really such a thing as too much saturation. Um, there's only there's only saturation in doing the same thing as everyone else is doing. Um, there's never saturation for new trends and new topics and new jokes and things. Um, so yeah, okay, this one, uh, treason. Uh, it took me a while to figure out this was supposed to be a snake. The S uh, wasn't immediately clear to me. It doesn't look like a snake. And I realize it's it needs to be an S. Um, but I think that, you know, the kink, like snakes don't have this kind of kink, <laughs> kind of hard, hard edge, hard angle. Um, they're more kind of fluid. So I think there's, there's design, um, you know, improvements we can make here. I'm not sure about like the, I think there's a red stroke around the text. Um, yeah, I think it, it um, <laughs> what can I say? The, there's work needed to, to make it look more attractive. I, I think as it, as it stands, it's not going to be the kind of thing people want to wear because it's not aesthetically that attractive. Um, I, 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 off the top of my head, I'm not familiar with like other trees and approaches to this concept. I get the, I get the angle and I get the, the joke if you like. Um, but I'm not sure maybe there's a bit too much going on, like trying to get 45 on the snake there as well as having a snake. I don't know. There's, there's a bit, there's a bit too much going on, I think with that one. Okay. Um, uh, okay. A couple of designs here. Uh, Stay pug blues. So this one, um, I have to admit, I did a bit of searching to try and understand. Oh, sorry, stray pug blues, not stay pug blues. Um, I'm I'm not getting the 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 core joke. I think, or maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there's a play on words I'm not um, getting, or maybe the pug is supposed to look like someone. Let me open it up to the comments. Maybe someone's going to correct me and and tell me exactly what I'm missing here on this design. Um, but I can certainly say that the illustration is is nice enough. You know, illustration of a pug in a very nice suit jacket. Um, there's a strong tradition of, um, um, you know, illustrations of, of animals in human clothing and stuff. And there's quite a lot of uh, designs like that that do very well. So so that's fine. Okay, we got some input here. Sorry. Thank you, Scott. Uh, from my famous book shot, supposed to be Mick Jagger. So, okay, it is supposed to be a Rolling Stones reference. I did wonder that. Um, okay, so, yeah, um, it wasn't immediately obvious to me that this was uh, Mick Jagger. So I think there's there's maybe more could be done there on that approach. Um, I think that that's fine. You know, making a reference to a famous person is okay as long as you're not expecting to... Um, put their name in the design anywhere because obviously that would be uh that would be problematic that would be difficult to sell um and also the question becomes like how are people going to find the design you know what are they going to be looking for are they going to be looking for mick jagger designs well no because you can't use his name are they going to be looking for funny pug designs that's kind of the angle you want to go down and are people who look for how many people who are looking for funny pug designs will be immediately drawn to a design like this, especially if they're not familiar with Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones and, and that kind of approach. So I think all in all, um, you know, it's a, it's a nice illustration. It's a nice graphic. Um, but I think it, you're going to struggle to, uh, to make much of it in an organic setting. Um, could it be the kind of thing where you do a kind of series of pugs with famous people? Um, if so, and if that's the real hook, then I would try and make I would make the pug something like you said in one of your comments. I think like Mick Pugler or something like that. Go down that approach. Um, but yeah, this doesn't scream Mick Jagger to me. Um, you know, if he had a microphone and if he was doing a kind of Mick Jagger stance, that would uh, maybe be a be a stronger angle. So yeah, hope that helps you there, Scott. Okay, this one here, free hugs. Just kidding. Don't touch me. Um, I think this one, there's not a lot to really get our teeth into here. Um, I think that's, um, that's a difficult, you know, 
<laughs> a difficult phrase to really go at. I think we need something else to really, uh, you know, make it a stronger concept and a stronger idea. Um, free hugs, just kidding, don't touch me. Yeah, it's kind of, basically what we're looking at is a um, a single, whoops, a single text phrase. And the joke is free hugs and then just kidding, don't touch me. I think first off, you want you don't want to do um, the way you've laid it out is not the best way to lay it out. Um, you know, if you want to do something like that, you'd be better to say free hugs and then underneath in like, you know, kind of um, small font. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, asterisk type stuff. You could do like an asterisk maybe. Free hugs. And then just kidding, don't touch me. So something like that, um, or, or probably like, actually, now I'm thinking about it. It's actually not a bad idea. Like imagine, um, you could do this, like, uh, something like this and free hugs and it looks kind of all, um, you know, unicorns and rainbows. like little stars and like a rainbow or something. I don't know. Hopefully you get the vibe kind of, oops, let me move this down a bit. You know, it looks really cute and, and fun. And then underneath it, oh, you have a little asterisk here. And then underneath, just kidding. Don't touch me. Something like that. I think that could be funny. You got, a, that's the best, that's the way to think about it. You know, you've got, you got thing one, you got thing two, and you draw a big line to differentiate between the two. It's like the setup of the joke and the punchline, and you're trying to communicate that in your design. So if you can do that, um, then yeah, um, that would be a, a better approach, I think, with a design like that. Okay, I think we got just two designs left to get through, so let me talk about those, and then I can take a few more questions before we wrap it up here today. Okay. Um, this one here, we got let me be, let me be. And we got three cute little cats. Uh, one of them on headphones on his chair. One of them just sitting there with a star on his head and one on his laptop with his glasses on, I think, um, or her glasses on. So, um, let me be, I, I think this is very much, it seems to me that the, the artist has got very much their own style and they're, and they're sticking with it. And that's cool. Um, I think, uh, th there is with a design like this, there's not so much concept wise that I can critique because there's not really uh, much of a concept there, if that makes sense. Like the, the concept, if you like, is, you know, just a phrase and, and some graphics of relaxing cats. And obviously it's r the, the real hook of the design. If you like this design, if people are going to purchase this design, they're going to do so because they like the illustrations and the colors and the cats. It's, you know, the, the phrase is actually kind of secondary and, and supportive, if anything, it's not the crux of the, of the design. So really what we're looking at is more of an aesthetically driven design an aesthetically driven concept. Um, people are going to like it or they're not. It, it, this is a very difficult one to sell organically, I think, and to, to get organic sales from, because how do you describe it? What do you, you know, what do you say? What words do you use that people are going to be searching for? You know, is it, is it cat design? Is it cute cat design? So those kind of things are, are difficult to, um, to really isolate on a design like this. But obviously having said that, um, there's, there's, there's more, you know, there, there are aesthetically that, you know, pleasant designs and patterns that sell all the time. Um, so I think if I can critique it just on the design side, I think there's some really good stuff about it. Like obviously the design approach is consistent. The illustration style is consistent and that's good. The colors are consistent throughout, which is good. And they're quite limited. So there's a very limited color palette. I think the text is, um, isn't really fitting that well. So I would recommend something like hand drawing the text, hand lettering the text in a style that kind of fits a bit nicer with the illustrations. Um, and 
I think um, just if, like this cat, I'm not really clear what this cat's doing. I can see that the other two are kind of relaxing and stuff, but this one's not really doing anything identifiable. So maybe you could rework that a little bit. Um, but yeah, again, there's not that much I can critique concept wise. So I'm, I'm left to kind of give my opinions on the, on the design side. And um, yeah, there's, I think if, if people are into that kind of vibe, they might like it. It's not clearly identifiable. Like I don't even know how you would describe the style. So that's um, that's something to maybe ponder, especially if you're trying to or you're hoping to get some some traffic from organic, um, you know, organic sources online and stuff like that. Um, okay, I'll just I'll just cover this one and then I'll take uh, questions and comments. Okay, so this one here. Whoops. Uh, maybe today Satan and we got Satan on the phone. So um, first off, obviously, this is a very good illustration, um, very skilled illustration, and it looks very professional. And, and I think it would look would look decent on a shirt. Now, having said that, I think the problem here is less about the illustration and it's more about the concept and, and how it's been rendered. Um, the more I think about it, the more I kind of get it and where where it's coming from. But I'm struggling to really, I don't know, I think, I, I wonder whether it would really connect with people. And I think if we think about the joke is hanging on this phrase, maybe today Satan, which is obviously a play on not today Satan. Um, and you kind of, a, a, I see kind of where you're coming from. It's kind of like, you know, Satan's been alerted that today might be the day, that kind of thing. Um but I wonder if this is the the best way to approach it. And I think that maybe the main problem is, I'm just kind of thinking this through as we as we go, but that it's it seems to be from the perspective of Satan rather than like uh, the person wearing the shirt or the, you know, that kind of angle. There's always like a few voices you can take when you're designing something. It could be the voice of a character. It could be the perspective of a character that's on the shirt, or it could be the person wearing it. Those are two two different approaches. So I think with a phrase like maybe today, Satan, I think the angle should probably come more from the person wearing the shirt and it should be more like, um, you know, I don't know. I guess the vibe is kind of like, um, you know, not today. Satan means no, I'm, what does it mean? <laughs> I'm standing up for myself. I'm, um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm I'm cutting off all these. It's kind of like a get behind me, Satan kind of vibe, isn't it? Um, so, so maybe today, Satan. I don't know. The thing that I've got in my head, or what it reminds me of, is um, is these designs where it's like um, I can't remember who does them, but um, there's an artist who's kind of got pretty popular from doing stuff like this, and it's like. You know, it's just like animals laying on their stomach or, or something like that, or like little simple, really simple stuff like that. Um, and that's what it kind of reminds me of. It's like, it's that same vibe, isn't it? It's that same energy. Um, you know, not today, Satan. It kind of means, nope, I can't be bothered. Um, that kind of vibe. So what does maybe today, Satan mean? Probably means like, yeah, maybe today I'll lie down and you can have it your way and that kind of thing, something like that. Um so, yeah, I mean, the only thing I keep coming back to is I'm going to do it as a rabbit. Um, it's like a sad rabbit. He's just kind of laid on his stomach or something like that. Um, I don't know. That's the only thing that kind of comes to mind. I think it's hard to to really um, imagine the best approach to that one. But you know what? I'm just going to kind of leave it there because <laughs> um, having said all that, you know, your illustration is very nice. It's it's certainly worth a shot. And um, like I said before, not every design is, is a winner off the bat. Is there a way to improve this one? Not in the way you've done it. I think, you know, you've done a great illustration. Um, we could maybe shake up the text a little bit more and and vary the, the layout a little bit, but otherwise it's a, it's a nice design and I wish you the best of luck with it really. Um, so yeah, okay. Let's leave it there and take a few comments and stuff like that. Uh, little bad Ren says, thank you. No problem. Um, a few comments on the Satan one. Drew says, looking kind of like Coop. 
Um, nice. Doesn't need the word balloon, in my opinion. Um, oh, the word balloon. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so instead of having the um, the text coming out of the phone, it could just it could just say maybe today, Satan. Yeah, that could work. I, I get that. That could be a nice um, uh, different approach. Um, Patricia, if Satan was giving a thumbs up, it could work. Okay, yeah, I guess that could that could change the vibe a little bit. Um, and Holloway says, I think that the not today Satan design would probably be a great opener for a, a greetings card joke. Uh, Kathleen says, make the word balloon jagged. So it's, uh, so it's clear that it's coming through the phone. Um, David says, as an atheistic pun, it could read not today, Jesus. Yeah, that, that's, uh, another angle as well. So we've got some good brainstorming, some good angles here. Um, oh, that's a good point, Ron. Um, it's The text is coming from the wrong side of the phone. Very clever. Uh, not clever, but yeah. Very pertinent, well spotted. F educators, what kind of design can terminate an account on a site such as Redbubble? Um, usually it's stuff like obviously the trademark, copyright infringement, anything like that. Um, something that is uh, against their policies, which would usually be things that maybe target a certain group, hate speech, things like that. Um, Anything else like not safe for work stuff. So if you're doing anything of that of that kind, then um, yeah, those could could definitely get your account terminated. Okay, um, if I've missed your question or something, go ahead and uh, drop it in the comments. I have a what do we have about four minutes before we need to wrap it up today. So if you've got a question or whatever that that's fine, go ahead and post it now. Pupival says, are there tools for checking copyright? Um, not as such, no, uh, Pupiful. There are no, there exists no easy way to search for a big database of copyright. The reason being that copyright exists as soon as you create something. So these little illustrations I've been doodling right now, maybe not, but um, but any design you create, you own the copyright when you create it. That's how the how the copyright law works. Um, you, know, you don't have to register it now in the U.S. And in other places, there are registers of copyright, but it's not something you can search through very easily and get information on and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, there isn't an ability to check copyright on stuff. Um, there are things like, for example, um, every year, usually around the turn of the year, you get stories about this, like things that are now copyright free. So, for example, I think in the US, is it every after 75 years or 100 years, uh, things no, the copyright to films and to books no longer applies. So I don't know whether, I can't remember what it was recently. Was it like The Great Gatsby and stuff? The Great Gatsby is like no longer under copyright, which means not the film, but the book. You can publish The Great Gatsby if you want. You can probably do stuff like reference the characters and do t-shirts around the characters and do t-shirts around the book. And you'd be uh, you'd be in, in safe waters for stuff like that. So if that's kind of what you're thinking about, then... Um, then uh, you can, I guess you can try and figure it out based on like the years from a certain point, like how many years has it been since this old book was published or since this old story came out or whatever. But it's kind of a messy, uh, a messy business. And the safest way, of course, is to create original ideas, original work, and to draw and commission and be responsible for all the artwork you're producing. That way you don't have to worry about copyrights, not it's no longer something you need to be worried about coming and biting you. Um, you then become the copyright holder and then you have the responsibility to go and protect your copyright and, uh, and stuff like that. So we're getting a bit deep into copyright. I'll leave it that one there. Um, Scott says, Michael, uh, would you say that the ideas workshop is orientated towards people who haven't been able to deal with the three questions, who, why, how effectively so far? Um, that's a good question, Scott. So the who, why, how questions, let's go back to that. Um, just to refresh our memories briefly. Um, the who, why, how questions, who is going to wear it? Why would they want to wear it? How are they going to find it? So these questions are about, um, they're primarily about helping people who are trying to sell um, artwork online and primarily through organic channels because 
Um, because that that's what the the how one is really about. You know, how are they going to find what you're producing? Um, so I guess you could say that these these aren't really that don't bear that stronger correlation to the ideas workshop. Um, what Scott's asking about is the ideas workshop, which is my um, which is my big course about ideas coming up with design ideas. Um, coincidentally, as you see on your screen, I'm doing a live ideas training on that and sharing more about some of the updates to it next uh, Tuesday. So you can register for that at michaelessig.com forward slash ideas dash live. I think the link is in the YouTube description as well. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, Scott, um, it's, it's, they're two, they're like chalk and cheese in many ways. Like ideas is the ideas workshop is, is about teaching you how to come up with great design ideas. And that, that's, that's a skill, whether you're producing for organic traffic or whether you have your own merchandise or whether you have your own Shopify store or whether you're producing for clients or something like that. Like having great ideas is a skill, a bit like the ability to design well. It's a skill that you can use in many different applications. And the who, what, and the why questions, the who, why, and the how questions, I should say, those are really questions I'm giving you to help you think about the ideas that you work on in the first place. So um, so there's a bit of overlap there, but yeah, they're, they're kind of two different topics, if that makes sense. Um, so I would say if you want to improve your design ideas, if you want to come up with better ideas and you want to understand kind of my approach and my philosophy for coming up with design ideas and all the tools I use to do that, um, then the Ideas Workshop will be of interest to you and you will certainly be able to come up with really good ideas once you have um, gone through all the, all the teachings and the classes inside the Ideas Workshop. Um, but yeah, answering the who, why, and how questions, you still have to answer those questions whether you um, whether you have a great ideas ability or not. So hope that helps. Andrew, how do you deal with copycats? Had to report one recently, pixel by pixel copy of my design. Um, I do what you've done, Andrew. I uh, report them. Um, I have filed multiple reports this week based on some of my best-selling uh, Redbubble ones at the moment that are selling very well. So, uh, yeah, I filed the DMCA takedowns. It's very straightforward. Um, both Redbubble and Amazon actually have taken stuff down within 24 hours um, yesterday and the day before. So, so yeah, you, uh, you file a takedown, and you should expect to see that stuff removed um, pretty quickly, actually. Tomatori, Redbubble has many copyrighted designs which are not taken down. I wonder how they sort this out. Um, yeah, I would just say, you know, don't worry about what other people are doing um, at any given moment. Um, yeah, it just just mind your own. I don't mean mind your own businesses and keep your nose out. I just mean, you know, people have been selling copyrighted and trademark stuff on, on Redbubble forever. Um, that doesn't mean you can't make a decent income um, selling legitimate stuff. And yes, your designs can be copy copied on Redbubble and you can file takedowns when that happens. So, um, so yeah, it's kind of like taking the rough with the smooth. There's, there, there is copycats. There are issues and stuff like that. Um, uh, but we, we carry on. You know, if you want to kind of put stuff out there, it's going to be copied. That's the nature of the internet. Especially if it's successful, it's going to be copied. Um, so, yeah, it's just something to, uh, to be aware of. Scott, I have a lot of ideas, but I think many don't connect or I don't know how to connect them to their audience but I need design help too, without a doubt. Yeah. So the ideas workshop is not about design. It's not a design course. It's about ideas and how to come up with great ideas and original ideas. Um, so if that's what you're interested in, then, um, then yeah, it could be for you and join me on the, the live training next Tuesday. And I'll, uh, obviously tell you a lot more about it. No fun. Is the ideas book different if I have the red cover version? Um, if you have the red cover version, then you have the first edition, and um, it has, I think, a couple of couple less chapters. But if you have the red version, you you should have access to the updated version via an ebook. So you can go online and get the updated version anytime you like. Um, Amira, thanks as always for another great session. Thank you, Amira. No problem. Little bad, little bad, Ren. How do I gauge success on Redbubble or TeePublic, etc.? If I only have about thirty designs published, trying to decide if I stay the course or mix it up. Um, how do you gauge success? 
Well, I mean, that only you can answer that question, of course. Um, I would say if you've if you've got 30 designs up and you're not making any sales within a, a month or two since those designs have been live, then you know something's going wrong. Um, or at least you know that the organic channel um, isn't working for you. You know, either people aren't searching for what you've de you've designed or they're searching but not finding your stuff or they're searching finding your stuff but not liking it. It could be one of those three things, could be other things that I've missed, but those are the main questions to ask yourself. Um, so yeah, if, if you're expecting to make sales organically and it's not working after a month, then you know something's wrong and you can you should probably revisit it and uh, have, a, have a rethink about it. But of course, that's not the only way to make sales. Um, that's just one, one way of dealing with it. Um, David says he's still dealing with the who part. I think once I conquer that, I can deal with the why and the how. Yeah, it does make life a lot easier once you know who you're designing for and, and uh, who they are. And the more you know about them, the easier it gets. Hideouts, adventures, thanks. I will submit my ideas. Where do I send the idea? Um, if you're talking about submitting an idea for a review, like on this live stream, then you need to be uh, signed up to my email newsletter, michaelessick.com forward slash newsletter. And uh, I send out an email the day before we do one of these lives. And you reply to that email, and then I I will feature your designs in the in the session. Okay, um, Scott, where's the updated version ebook, Michael? Um, it's if you purchase the little book of t-shirt ideas, then you will have an email that gives you access to the members area for the little book of t-shirt ideas, which has various bonuses and bits and pieces. And you can always download the latest version of the book as an ebook from there. So check your emails, or if you can't find it, uh, drop me an email, michael at michaelessic.com, and I'll look into it for you. Um, Animatris Joe says, thanks, Michael. Scott says, that's how I know, 350 designs. Scott says, next to no sales. Uh, Luke, do you advise using FB paid ads? I seem to be getting lots of link clicks with using targeted audiences, but conversions is poor to sales. Um, I am not by any means a Facebook ad expert, so I'm I'm not the best uh, the best guy to ask about that. Um, I have I've used FB paid ads, but only as um, in a retargeting sense. So people have already landed on my Shopify store, I retarget them, and then that usually works or can can usually be profitable for being, bringing people back to make sales, um, but not to cold audiences in that sense, um, or even targeted audiences. I've never really done that and uh, so can't really advise on it. But I I would say um, it wouldn't be my first port of call. I would prefer to look into advertising, like working with influencers on Instagram or something like that. Um, that would be a, a better approach, I think, than diving straight into paid Facebook ads. Okay. Um, I think we'll round it up there today. So thanks for joining me, guys. Um, I did want to mention as well, you can get a updated copy of this ebook, Five Ways to Improve Your Design Ideas. This has been recently updated with uh, a few bonus chapters. This is a completely free ebook resource uh, with some very practical tips and how to's and stuff. So if you're interested in improving your design ideas, then you can sign up and get access to that, excuse me, straight away at michaelessick.com forward slash live ideas and if you do that you'll also be saving your seat for the live training next week um which is going to be on next tuesday 26th of jan um and you can obviously register for that at the same address as well ideas live ideas dash live uh put the link in the comments here um, so yeah, live ideas training next Tuesday. If you want to join me for that, it will not be broadcast live on YouTube or on Facebook or anywhere. Um, you will have to be signed up um, and have expressed an interest to get the link to watch that live. Um, and that will be next Tuesday, 4 p.m. UK time. If you're interested in that, details are on your screen. Okay. Um, and you can also get access to the updated ebook on there as well. Okay. Um, I will leave that there for today. Um, oh, of course, if you do want to get a copy of the Little Book of T-shirt ideas, that's at michaelessick.com forward slash book. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll wrap it up there for today. Thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you had a good 
one here. Hope you enjoyed the session. I uh, hope you got something out of it. And I hope to see you next Tuesday on the live training there. Otherwise, I'll be in your inboxes. Make sure you're signed up as usual at michaelessig.com forward slash live, as you can see there. All right. Um, have a great rest of your Thursday. Have a great weekend. Hopefully, I'll see you next week. And uh, yeah, take it easy. Thanks for joining me. See you soon. Bye-bye.